Hello everybody, Nathan here with a mind test modding tutorial, and I'm be wondering, what in the world? How is this mind test modding? Well, inevitably, when you create a mod, at some point, you are going to need to make textures. Uh, so today, I'm going to be overviewing use of Krita, or Krita, however you deem it correctly enunciated. Um, I most often hear it referred to as Krita. But I could be entirely wrong. I have no idea. Um, wonders of the Internet age, you know, all these software programs and they have names, but you never actually heard it said by anybody real because you're always communicating with people on the Internet where you aren't talking. So I could be completely slaughtering the enunciation. I have no idea. Um, I will be providing the download link in the description. It is a free open source program. It is available for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Uh, I am using it on Linux with a dark theme here. Um, I have installed it on Windows. It runs definitely a little slower and a little buggier, I feel. Absolutely no experience with Mac OS. I have no idea how well or poorly that works. But, like I said, download link will be in the description. I'm sure you can find out how it works for you when you try installing it and visit their forums if you have issues. Don't ask me unless it's something on Linux because I'm not going to be able to give you any help on Mac or Windows. Okay, so with that out of the way, actually let me uh, let me cancel this so we can we hit File, New, or Control N. Generally speaking, if you're going to stick with convention, we're going to use a 16 by 16 image. Um, I have been creating a texture pack which I will actually include the link for. It's on GitHub right now. Uh, maybe about a fifth or the sixth of the way through default games textures. And I've been doing a 32 by 32 because I feel that gives a lot more room for detail than a 16 by 16 does. But this is not to start an argument about which resolution you should be using. Default game, everything is 16. So if you want things to look normal for default game, you're going to want to use a 16 by 16 texture as well. Okay, so you'll see here, I, I've already been using this for a while, so I've got some things set up. Uh, first thing we're going to want to use is we click on this little brush selector, this little tic-tac-toe board looking thing, and we want to select just the simple pixel one brush. Now, this should be part of the default brush install, I believe. Uh, make sure our size is set to one pixel, opacity, probably one at 100%. Uh, left click will paint. Right click will pull up this nice little selector. You're really not going to be using any different brushes when you're doing your textures because you're pretty much going to stick with the one pixel brush. But you do have the color selector here, which is something you will definitely be needing. Now, Control Z undoes, which is probably goes without saying. Uh, I do like to turn on the grid, and this pretty much gives me a pixel by pixel grid. Um, that's not going to work, whoops, the first time around, you will have to configure it, which will be right underneath, right here, configure Krita, and you just want to do grid options, horizontal, vertical spacing of one, and that'll give you a line every, uh, every pixel. So as you can see right now, we are zoomed in quite a bit, because it's 16 by 16 pixels, uh, according to the zoom bar here, 4,525%. Now, this is all good and well. You know, we can make our texture, and I have no idea what this texture is. Just a simple square. You know, looks great. We can zoom out to see what it's kind of going to look like in-game, which honestly will be something around-ish this size or so. So we can kind of see what it looks like. But we've got all these grids. It's kind of annoying when we're looking at the small view. I just like it so I can kind of know straight lines, everything like that, see what I'm doing a little easier. So what we can actually do is go under Windows and do a new view, unnamed. You're not going to really notice a change right away, other than it turns the grid off. But now if we do Windows, we can select Cascade. And you see, we have two windows of the same thing here. So let me move the one with the grid over. Resize this. Here we have the gridded version. That's the one we'll be doing most of our work on. Then we have a smaller version here. This will kind of be our overview image we look at. And now you'll notice 
it is relatively real time that that updates. Now, say you're doing something for a cube. I don't know if cube is really that word. You're doing something for a node that is going to be a repeating, like grass texture, dirt texture, stone, cobble, whatever. And you want to see how your edges are going to match up to be repeating. Luckily, we can do that very easily. We just do, where's here, wrap around mode. And now it wraps us around. So I can put a line there. And then obviously we'd want a line there if we want the lines to meet. However, maybe we don't want the lines to meet. So we can do something like this. And our lines don't meet. Maybe that's what you're looking for. I don't know. Maybe you want to do something like this. Where your lines almost meet, but don't. And we'll just do that. Ta da! It's still very obvious where your seams are, but it looks a little less obvious because points are going across. How is that possible? We're just kind of we're using our heads here and manipulating things to do what we need them to do. And we'll just paint the center of this flag. <laughs> And you know what? I think we're going to fill, if you've ever used really any painting program, I must paint anything, you'll know exactly how all these tools work, the fill buckets, everything like that. Um, we're going to go over a few of the cool little features that I have used quite extensively here, and I have been extremely pleased with the results. Um, let's do like a, a rich purple or something. For absolutely no point in the world. You can see what it looks like in a tiled format right here in the smaller size. You can zoom out infinitely, it turns all pink. And you can zoom in quite a bit too. I usually keep it something around that, but do what you like best. Okay, but let's get on to some of the some of the more tool type stuff. Things that are a little more special effects that you might not know about right away. Um, we have selection boxes right here. You have a square selection, circle, freehand, circle, magic wand, which will do as one would expect, select all about one color. Sometimes the little marching ants look a little funny, but usually selection is just fine. You have the eyedropper selection tool, which will select all of one color. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the square one, though. I want to deselect everything. And I'm just going to do a selection of this orange with the pink and the black in it. And now we're going to go to filters, and then we're going to select this gimmick here. Gimmick, I have no, maybe gimmick, I don't know. Uh, preview size doesn't really work too well. It gives you a huge box with nothing. And that's probably real size of 16 pixels. Honestly, you can't see anything there. But if you change preview to on canvas, it'll update right in here and right in there. And now, some of my favorites, the noise. We can do an additive noise, which is nice here. Kind of gives it that pixely look, which we've all know, come to know and love or hate. You know, you want to add a little grunge to it, but you don't really feel like going in and painting it all manually. Well, here's one way to do it. And uh, you have a couple different options. You have uh, Gaussian, uniform noise, salt and pepper, which is the most extreme, and this Poison. I believe is the correct pronunciation. So we have different choices there. Again, play around and find something you like. And then what I really like is channels. You can go through and you can only affect the lightness. So here we're just changing how bright those are. We're not actually changing the colors. You can change values. That pretty much just does the darkness. Change the saturation. Change the hue. That one will actually change the colors. And then we just got all these other different options here where we can just change one color of the color channel all sorts of fun stuff um, but i'm not i'm not going to do anything with that one right now uh, we can apply which will leave the window open here but apply changes or we can hit okay which will apply and close the window spread i really enjoy using on like um well i can't think of what the word is like trees um organic organic textures where you kind of want to make it look like a living thing we can take this spread value here and basically these values it'll take an area by that many pixels 
and it kind of just jumbles it all up. So I have found that using a very small value, such as this, gives a, a decent organic type of feel to it. You can type in these boxes as well. Um, you pretty much just hover over it with your mouse and click, type a number, and enter, and it'll update that. This is really a very poor example, though. So let me select nothing and take a brush here. I'm just make the brush very large. And just to eliminate everything. And now you may have just noticed that. And if you didn't, let me show you again. When you're using wraparound mode, if you paint, oh, I need to use a different color. If you paint off to the side, it will paint through to the other side. So that can be useful if you're trying to get something to match up. Uh, I'm actually going to undo that though and select a slightly different blue color. And I think what I want to do, again, you can do, whoa. Uh, my mouse acted up there. You can also type numbers right there. I think what I want to do here is kind of create like a water texture. So we're going to do something that kind of has a wavy pattern to it. Uh, really not spending a lot of time on this. Just kind of going through and doing a, a quick and dirty wave kind of idea here. It's going to look like trash, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to continue that line on uh, as we come out from the edge there. I mean, yeah, honestly, it looks like trash. Um, let's kind of make those two lines connect. And then paint that out. Alright, so it, it definitely does not look good, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. All right, and then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna do some noise again. And and this is kind of what I was doing for like the wooden stuff. That obviously is way too strong, but when you put this down to something much smaller, ta-da! Kind of gives it a look of anti-aliasing without actually being anti-alias. So it kind of softens up your lines, makes some gradual color transforms between them. Like I said, it really it makes it look more organic, which probably a good thing, you know, unless you're going for a super cartoony texture, in which case you probably wouldn't want to use this. Like I said, you can apply multiple times, and each time kind of spreads it out more and more. Um, and again here, because we do have... I think I have to close this window first. Oh no, don't hang up on me. No, please, no. Yep. I think I can force quit that without... No! Oh! Without killing everything. Okay, I lied. Um, it's still heavily under development. However, it has a pretty good... I was gonna say a pretty good file recovery. It auto saves every five minutes is what I have it set up for on my computer. I only saved the file, not the layout. Clearly, five minutes wasn't enough. Now let's do a new view and cascade it again. Turn on the grid. Zoom out here. Yeah, so can do that. Let me uh, pull up, pull up what I did the other day here real quick for you. All right, I think you guys didn't really want to watch me open these all up, so it'd be kind of boring. Plus, I first tried to view in a different program, but it blurred everything. So, here we go. Basically, you no, know, these are thirty-two by thirty-two pixel textures. Uh, again, this is for my texture pack. Uh, this is the chest, as you may have guessed from the default chest top name of the file right here. Basically, on this guy, let me uh, do a nice red uh, color here. Basically, what I painted on this, let me find the line too. I did the border, 
all the way around here. That was painted in. Though uh, that actually did not get modified by the by the noise that I used. And then I did these dark lines were painted. So basically what you see in the red is what I actually painted myself and I used a dark brown color. And then using my my tools here again, I just did a little bit of the spread noise. Oh, you know what though? Would help if I first selected only this inside. And I didn't quite do that high of value. Probably something closer to like this or so. Maybe a little more than that. But I basically just did a very low value here, a little less than that. And that kind of blurred out the lines, kind of gave it a more realistic look. Now, there's this lighter color here. And that was a different tool. I think it was under artistic. Honestly, I do not remember which <coughs> I don't remember which it was but I used one of these other tools here to kind of give it that initial effect I don't remember what it was um, no wait it was something Add detail. I think that's what it was. Details. Um, yep, mighty details is what I added. Ta -da! Kind of amplified those lights, except it was just a solid color in the background. So I used mighty details first to kind of throw in a little extra detail to it. Um, pretty much same with this. The line here was existing, and then the the two spots here is what I actually ran the filters on. These darker lines existed. And I did the mighty detail again. And then I did a very, very light blur. Or not a blur, a noise. And same thing with this. I selected pretty much around the little lock portion. And all the way there. Down there. And then this upper half here as a selection. This centerpiece was not in the selection. Again, muddy detail first, and then did a little noise spread. And, I don't know, I think it gives it a very organic look to it. Um, looks like it's actual wood, instead of looking like it's something super cartoony. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out some. Uh, I'll be doing a video for GIMP next week. GIMP seems to work better in my limited experience on Windows. Um, but it doesn't give you quite as many of the fun features that I have here. Plus, I use Krita all the time for doing digital painting with my tablet and stuff, so I'm, I'm much more familiar with it. The way I like to explain the difference, Krita is a digital painting program. GIMP is really a photo manipulation program. Um, though, I mean, I'm going to have to say, I've seen some really, really impressive like oil paintings that people have done in GIMP with graphics tablets so it is completely possible it's just maybe it's not in, as intuitive or I just haven't spent enough time in it using a graphics tablet um, but I prefer Krita over GIMP for painting and doing pixel art uh, just my opinion though you know take it or leave it I'll do a GIMP video next week for you guys so you can kinda of pick what works best for you um, depending on your OS GIMP might be more stable a little easier to install uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, check out my texture pack if you want. Uh, if you want to leave any comments or anything, feel free to do on GitHub. I will uh, make sure and respond to all those. Address any issues maybe you're seeing or anything. If you have suggestions, I am all ears. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next week.